plasma. What really is it? Well, here's a plasma. Here's a plasma. Oh! And another one. Another plasma. Even more plasma. Don't forget the sun's made of plasma too. You may have been introduced to plasmas as the fourth state of matter. And in my video about lightsabers, I called it essentially an ionized gas. But neither of those descriptions really covers what we actually mean by a plasma in physics. And delving into the proper definition of a plasma might make you question everything you were originally told. Is plasma really the fourth state of matter? I think it's fair to say there's no simple, generally accepted one sentence definition of what a plasma actually is. But if you were to try and make one, it would have to contain a few key ingredients. Like a gas, plasmas do not have a fixed shape or volume, but unlike a gas, they must contain electrically charged particles or species. Those include electrons, which are negatively charged, and at least one type of positively charged ion. And you can have some negatively charged ions as well. You can also have neutral species or neutral particles. They're allowed in there, but for it to be a plasma, there have to be enough of those unbound electrically charged particles. How much is enough? We'll get onto that later. The next requirement is that if we take a certain amount of plasma and add up all of the charges of all of those particles, they have to cancel one another out. Plasmas are quasi-neutral, as we call them. Finally, all those charged particles have to be affected by, but also contribute to, electric and magnetic fields. And that leads them to exhibit collective behaviour. How does that work? Each charged particle's location and motion will add to the overall electric and magnetic field. And that overall electric and magnetic field affects each charged particle's motion. It's this collective behaviour which most physicists say make plasmas so different. And that right there was the real definition of a plasma. Though to be honest, I've been pretty damn vague about a lot of those things. If we want to get properly technical, plasmas have to satisfy three criteria. The first is called the plasma approximation and it says the charged particles have to be close enough together such that they will interact with lots of different particles rather than just its nearest neighbour. How close is close enough though? The Debye length is the distance over which ions electrostatic effects are essentially screened or shielded out by the much lighter electrons. So for collective effects, we need to have lots of ions within a Debye sphere. The second criterion is that we don't want to have to worry about effects of the edges of the plasmas. So they have to be a lot, lot bigger than a Debye length. The final criterion relates to the speed at which electrons will naturally wobble. They can do this in two ways, through electrostatic fields called plasma oscillations or through the presence of a magnetic field called gyromotion. So for plasmas to act differently from gases, we need the frequency of these motions to be much larger than the frequency of any particle collisions. There you have it, basically the first subchapter of my PhD thesis. So what's the problem? Well, my quick definition of plasma as just an ionized gas doesn't cover all of those points that I've just raised. Let's go into an example. Many people will claim that a naked flame is an everyday example of a plasma, but it isn't. Yes, most flames are weakly ionized and they will interact with external electric and magnetic fields, but there really aren't enough charged particles around for them to exhibit that collective behavior. So we can't call them plasmas. Okay, what about labeling plasmas as the fourth state of matter? It makes them sound exotic, doesn't it? And whilst here on Earth, solids, liquids, and gases are more prevalent throughout the universe, Plasmas are by far the most abundant state of matter out there. 99% of all known matter is in the plasma state. That's not counting dark matter because we don't know what that is. All the stars, solar and stellar winds, interstellar medium, accretion disks, nebulae, 
They're all examples of space and astrophysical plasmas. So from the point of view of how common the states of matter are, surely plasma should be the first state of matter, though ordering the rest of them might be a bit tricky. But you might be saying, well, clearly it's ordered on temperature. Take a solid, heat it up, and it will melt, forming a liquid. Keep on heating it up, it will boil, forming a gas, and go further again, and it will ionize and form a plasma. But again, it's not as simple as that. For instance, you can form plasmas at low temperatures like this by using very strong electric fields to rip the electrons off of the atoms, or even by using electromagnetic waves like laser light to kick those electrons off. But ignoring that, you have to remember that depending on the pressure, you might not get that simple solid to liquid to gas to plasma route as you amp up the temperature. Helium exists as a solid at temperatures just a smidge over absolute zero, only at pressures of greater than 25 atmospheres. Whereas at low pressures, most materials will actually forego the liquid state and go straight from a solid to a gas called sublimation. And even some metals strictly obey the plasma criterion because of their free charge carriers. Going beyond just solids, liquids and gases, there are other states that we have discovered. Glass is a separate state, it's otherwise known as a non-crystalline amorphous solid. Then you've got the liquid crystal state, particularly important for that other sort of television technology. Magnetically organized states like ferromagnets. There are low temperature quantum states of matter like the Bose-Einstein condensate and superfluids and even high temperature states of matter like the quark gluon plasma. So you can see that simply numbering the states of matter isn't really an option. Part of the problem is that defining states of matter is really hard. Historically, it was done by just qualitative differences in the properties, and now we can say that a different state of matter is a distinct form of that material. Often you might hear people talk about phases rather than states, but the two aren't necessarily the same thing. The description of a phase is a region of a material that is chemically the same everywhere, physically distinct and separable from anything else that might be around. From what we know about plasmas though, they don't really follow that definition. They're made up of multiple different components which are naturally tied together. Any neutral species, which can be gases or even solids, are a key part of the plasma and will affect it. And the formation of a plasma is an incredibly gradual process, unlike the very distinct phase transitions that we go through when you transfer between solids, liquids, and gases. Basically, the definitions that we've built up over the era of chemistry before we had discovered or really understood plasmas are either just way too vague or far too rigid for plasmas to really fit in them. So really, plasma is just plasma. And it is everywhere. Cheers for watching this video. If you liked it, go on, tell your friends about it, click the thumbs up, click subscribe, just, just click everywhere. I'd really appreciate it.